hey, 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 you know what time it is. Woo! Get into it! Get into it! Yes! We are back! <laughs> we are back, lovelies. We are back with Storytime with Chris. We are now, now, if I'm not mistaken, we are, oh, okay. So we got one more chapter, okay. I thought we were on the final one, but it's okay. I have to remember these books end on 13 chapters. And then, let me find, oh, there it is. So, if you've been paying attention, we are going to be reading the entirety of the series of unfortunate events um, for the Instagram community of Storytime with Chris. And like I always say, you do not have to watch these videos when they go live. You're more than welcome to watch them in your downtime, nap time, in between time, max and chillax and relax in time, work time, nap time, break time. Anytime you want to hear a highly animated voice bringing you magical stories of fantasy, sci-fi, adventure, and so many things in between. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and continue our reading of The Reptile Room. <laughs> and I cleaned my glasses before I started. <clears throat> oh, two, two, two. Thank you. All right. Chapter 12. I promise you that this is the last time that I will use the phrase, meanwhile, back at the ranch. But I can think of no other way to return to the moment when Klaus had just explained to Mr. Poe what Sonny had meant by shouting, Aha! And now everyone in the reptile room was staring at Stefano. Sonny looked triumphant. Klaus looked defiant. Mr. Poe looked furious. Dr. Lucafont looked worried. You couldn't tell how the incredibly deadly viper looked because the facial expressions of snakes are difficult to read. But I'm pretty sure the snake was giving this. Could have told you it was Stefano. It could have told you it was Kalaola. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> Stefano looked back at all these people silently, his face fluttering as he tried to decide whether to come clean, a phrase which here means admit that he's really Count Olaf and up to no good, or perpetuate his deception, a phrase which here means lie, lie, lie. Stefano, Mr. Poe said and coughed into his handkerchief. <laughs> Klaus and Sonny waited impatiently for him to continue. Stefano, explain yourself. You have just told us that you're an expert on snakes. Previously, however, you told us you knew nothing of snakes and therefore couldn't have been involved in Dr. Montgomery's death. What is going on? When I told you I uh, knew nothing of snakes, Stefano said, I was being modest. Now, if you will excuse me, I have to go outside for a moment then. You were being modest, Klaus cried. You were lying, and you're lying now. You're nothing but a liar and a murderer. Stefano's eyes grew wide, and his face clouded in anger. You have no evidence of that, he said. Yes, we do, said a voice in the doorway, and everyone turned around to find Violet standing there with a smile on her face and evidence in her arms. Triumphantly, she walked across the reptile room to the far end, where the books Klaus had been reading about the Mamba du Mal were still stacked in a pile. The others followed her, walking down the aisle of reptiles. Silently, she raised the objects in a line on top of a table. The glass vial with the sealed rubber cap, the syringe with the sharp needle, the small bunch of folded papers, a car laminated in plastic, the powder puff, and the small hand mirror. What is all this? Mr. Poe said, gesturing to the arrangement. This, Violet said, is evidence which I found in Stefano's suitcase. My suitcase, Stefano said, is private property, which you are not allowed to touch. It's very rude of you, and besides, it was locked. It was an emergency, Violet said calmly, so I picked the lock. How did you do that, Mr. Poe asked. Nice girl should know how to do such things. My sister is a nice girl, Klaus said. She knows how to do all sorts of things. Rufik, Sonny agreed. Which, I'm going to take a guess, that means terrific in sunny language. Let me just take a stab in the dark. Well, we'll discuss that later, Mr. Poe said. In the meantime, please continue. When Uncle Monty died, Viola began, my siblings and I were very sad, but we were also very suspicious. We weren't suspicious, Klaus exclaimed. If someone is suspicious, it means they are not sure. 
we were positive that Stefano killed him. Nonsense, Dr. Lutfa said. As I explained to all of you, Montgomery Montgomery's death was an accident. The Mabadumal escaped from its cage and bit him, and that's all there is to it. I beg your pardon, Violet said, but that is not at all there is to it. Klaus read up on the Mabadumal and found out how it kills its victims. Klaus walked over to the stack of books and opened them one on top. He had marked his place with a small piece of paper, so he found what he was looking for right away. The Mama du Mal, he read out loud, is one of the deadliest snakes of the hemisphere, noted for its strangulatory grip, used in conjunction with its deadly venom, giving all of its victims a tenebrous hue, which is ghastly to behold. Put the book down and turned to Mr. Poe. Strangulatory means we know what the words mean, Stefano shouted. Then you must know, Klaus said, that the Mamba Dumal did not kill Uncle Monty. His body could not ha didn't have a tenebrous brood. It was as pale as could be. That's true, Mr. Poe said, but it doesn't necessarily indicate that Dr. Montgomery was murdered. Uh, yes, Dr. Lukefond said, perhaps just this once. The snake didn't feel like bruising its victim. It is more likely, Violet said, that Uncle Monty was killed with these items. She held up the glass vial with the sealed rubber cap. This vial is labeled Venom du Mal, and it's obviously from Uncle Monty's cabinet of venom samples. She then held up the syringe with a sharp needle. Stefano, Olaf, took this syringe and injected the venom into Uncle Monty. Then he poked an extra hole so it would look like the snake had bitten him. But I love Dr. Montgomery, Stefano said. I wouldn't have nothing to gain from his death. Sometimes when someone tells a ridiculous lie, it is best to ignore it entirely. When I turned 18, as we all know, Viola continued, ignoring Stefano entirely, I inherit the Baudelaire fortune, and Stefano intended to get that fortune for himself. It would be easier to do so if we were in a location that was more difficult to trace, such as Peru. Violet held up the small bunch of folded papers. These are tickets for the Prospero, leaving Hazy Harbor for Peru at 5 o'clock today. That's where Stefano was taking us when we happened to run into you, Mr. Poe. But Uncle Monty tore up Stefano's ticket to Peru, Klaus said, looking confused. I saw him. That's true, Violet said. That's why he had to get Uncle Monty out of the way. He killed Uncle Monty, Violet stopped for a minute and shuddered. He killed Uncle Monty and took this laminated card. It's Monty's membership for the Hermitological Society. Stefano planned to pose as Uncle Monty to get on board the Prospero and whisk us away to Peru. But I don't understand, Mr. Poe said. How did Stefano even know about your fortune? Because he's really Count Olaf, Violet said, exasperated that she had to explain what she and her siblings and you and I knew that moment Stefano arrived at the house. He may have shaved his beard and trimmed off his eyebrows, but the only way he could get rid of the tattoo on his left ankle was with this powder puff and this hand mirror. There's makeup all over his left ankle to hide the tattoo. I'll bet if we rub it with a cloth, we can see the tattoo. That's absurd, Stefano cried. We'll see about that, Mr. Poe replied. Now, who has a cloth? Not me, Violet said. Not me, Violet said, Klaus said. <laughs> Go here, Sonny said. Well, if nobody has a cloth, we might as well forget the whole thing. Dr. Lucafont said, but Mr. Poe held up a finger to tell him to wait. To the relief of the Baudelaire orphans, he reached into his pocket and withdrew his handkerchief. Your left ankle, please, he said sternly to Stefano. But you've been coughing into it that all day, Stefano said. It has germs. If you're really who the children say you are, Mr. Poe said, then germs are the least of your problems. Your left ankle, please. Stefano, and this is the last time, thank goodness we'll have to call him by his phony name, gave a little growl and pulled his left pants leg up to reveal his ankle. Mr. Poe knelt down and rubbed it for a few minutes. At first, nothing appeared to happen. But then, like a sun shining through clouds at the end of a terrible rainstorm, the faint outline of an eye began to appear clearer and clearer, and it grew until it was as dark as it had been when the orphans first saw it, back when they had lived with Count Olaf. Violet, Klaus, and Sonny all stared at the eye, and the eye stared back. For the first time in their lives, the Baudelaire orphans were happy to see it. 
And that is where we shall end for today. We have one last chapter, and then we're going to move on to the third book, which is The Wide Window. And as always, y'all, I really do appreciate your love and support. Please have an amazing day today, and I'll see you next time, okay? Bye, y'all. See you later.